Welcome to Gazel Information Technologies online webinar. I'm your host Priyanka Das. In this webinar, you will learn how to assess your product or supply chain cost. Before I hand over to Mr. Philip Gold, Director of Gazel Technologies Private Limited, there are a few things I want to cover with you. We are recording our webinar. We will post it in, on our website. You can visit our website www.gazel.in for this link. Additionally, we will send our recorded webinar to attendees. If you have any questions, Mr. Kirit can set up a discussion. We want to hear your questions about our findings. We will answer your question at the end of our webinar. Let me introduce our director, Mr. Kirit Goel. He is founder and director of Guest Information Technologies Private Limited. He has 21 years of working experience in supply chain. He set up a supply chain domain consulting firm over decades. He served industries like healthcare technologies, power and energy, oil and gas, food and beverage, telecom, FMCG, consumer durables, aviation. He also co-authored book on implications of GST in Indian scenario. He has also co-authored white paper on practical framework for demand forecasting in India and RFID middleware. Integration to the entire supply chain, he architect and award-winning forecasting software look ahead available on the cloud. He shares his experience in many conferences our topic of today webinar is how to assess your product supply chain cost. Now I hand over to Mr. Kiri. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Priyanka. Uh, and thank you all of those who are attending the webinar. So I, first of all, I'll go through uh, some of the slides that I have prepared, uh, which will talk about uh, uh, the topic, uh, which is how to assess your supply chain costs for a product. And then after that, we'll go into a discussion mode where we can uh, take questions and also if there are any uh, thoughts from your side. So let's uh, first see uh, what are those elements that go into uh, finding the product cost. So uh, now there are two aspects to uh, the cost of a product. So one is uh, that we find the cost of goods sold which is my total supply chain cost uh, inclusive of all my uh, material costs, my uh, labor costs, and also any overheads that go into the production of uh, production or transportation of uh, the uh, product. So uh, now, now the trick is to find out on a regular basis that what is that actual cost? Because in the uh, case of budgeting at the beginning of the year, I would have decided that I will keep my product cost as this. And so my margins will be X, Y, Z. But as the year progresses, as the business progresses, what is my actual product cost of, of the most recent shipment to the uh, you know, particular X uh, customer? So this helps me identify where the issue is. So if uh, uh, you know, uh, I say my average cost of the product is 10 rupees uh, and, and uh, I find out that for a particular customer, it is actually 12 rupees. So I need to analyze why that is happening. So how do we do that? Uh, actually, there are softwares to do that and uh, we have a software called Supply Chain Q, which can analyze all the historical data uh, all types of transactions and arrive at those different elements of cost uh, that went into uh, shipping, manufacturing, shipping and uh, selling the product. Now, typically, you know, any organization has multiple systems where all this information will be stored. So we may have an ERP where all the manufacturing cost will be there, which is fine. Uh, then we may have a payroll system, which may or may not be part of the ERP system. Uh, but again, it will have the labor costs, it will have all those uh, people related costs. Then there may be uh, other third party systems where I am storing some transportation costs, overheads, etc., uh, which are not coming to my uh, ERP. So uh, what we have to do is we have to we have to connect to all those different systems where this historical transaction data is there 
and pull all that information into this analytical software. Now, uh, the third uh, step would be to uh, find out that uh, what are those allocation rules of different cost heads. Uh, so if I am allocating an overhead, uh, let's say it is rent of a manufacturing plant or maybe rent of a warehouse uh, to products. So what is the rule that I use to allocate that uh, total rent to different SKUs? Now that could be, uh, you know, the SKUs that have passed to a particular warehouse and divide by the number of SKUs that have passed to that warehouse. Uh, so there can be different rules which uh, any uh, you know cost accountant in a particular company knows. So that is the third step that I should know all those allocation rules for different cost heads that would be used to allocate the total number to the SKUs. Now uh, another thing which uh, such a software can help you in is that. Uh, you, you can analyze your cost at different levels. By different levels, I mean that you can analyze the cost to a particular customer in a particular region, or you can also uh, see in a overall zone or to a particular city. So although the product is same, but you need to know that my total cost of the pr product, if I ship it to Eastern zone, is this much versus if I ship it to the southern zone. So this brings out the difference that what is it uh, or, or what is that element of cost that needs to be attacked so that you can reduce your overall costs. Then finally, uh, you know, we are talking about historical data, but we can also load our future demand and then find out what will be the expected cost. So till now we talked about my actual historical cost, but if I uh, you know, use my future forecast, I can find out that what will be my expected cost based on all uh, you know, these cost elements. Let's look at some of those cost elements. So again, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, so we obviously have the material cost. This is all the material that has gone into manufacturing my product. Then labor cost is the direct uh, labor cost that goes into uh, manufacturing the product. Uh, then uh, these can be broken down into uh, machine as well as people resources. So uh, people resources can come from the uh, you know the payroll that has been um, run for those particular uh, labor employees who have directly contributed to the manufacturing. And then there can be machines which have a cost of their own. Uh, the inventory holding cost, because we are uh, storing uh, some inventory at different points, uh, different stock points. So the opportunity cost of doing that. Warehousing cost, which is the cost of uh, setting up a warehouse, doing warehouse operations as the product moves in and out. Logistics cost is the cost taken to transport uh, the material from point A to point B. Packing cost is uh, you know, any packaging material, which is a sizable amount nowadays for most of the products. The return cost, many times you don't consider the reverse logistics as part of the total cost. So any reverse logistics due to product warranty or uh, replacement that we have to do, that also needs to be considered. Then once the product has been repaired, we ship it back. So bring in that cost also. Sometimes the product has to be scrapped, is irreparable. So what was the written off cost? Uh, there are many systems that are used uh, to support all these operations. So there has to be a depreciation cost related to that. Uh, warehouse cost uh, including tracking. So these are actual operations that are happening in my warehouse as well as any third party uh, logistics warehouse. Uh, Staging costs in some cases. So the staging costs are again building up of inventory for a special special event that is happening and any types of insurances, overheads, etc. So again, these are not uh, by any chance exhaustive list, but I think I would have covered almost all of them. But there's always a possibility that any organization may have more cost elements and uh, you know any software should be capable of 
taking into account those cost elements also. So what are the benefits of uh, uh, doing this uh, uh, supply chain cost analysis of your products? So, uh, you know, of course, uh, by doing some financial analytics and ratios on our products, we do know some of the ratios, but this is going beyond that because now we know in my entire supply chain network, what is the cost that can be attributed to each of the element of the network. So my supplier cost is so much, which includes, uh, of course, uh, the raw material cost, but it also includes some other costs that may be there uh, while I'm, uh, uh, you know, buying the product from my supplier, the raw material from my suppliers. Uh, how much does it cost to ship to my customers? If I have service providers in between, how much does it cost to take services from them, from my partners? If I manufacture on my own or if I manufacture, get it manufactured outside, my warehouse cost, whether I should have my own warehouse, whether I should outsource it. So once I have all these breakups available with me, at least the transparency is there that I know the costs due to each of these uh, partners that I have in my supply chain. Now, again, uh, many times we do this exercise uh, once in a year and that's it. Uh, we, we don't, uh, you know, as businesses change during the year or some event happens, uh, the right way would be to do this exercise again. So having a product again helps us to do this analysis very quickly and model that uh, change that is going to happen. Now change could be that you are adding a new geography into your uh, market. You are adding a new warehouse, you are adding new products. Uh, so any change that is happening affects your cost and you need to know that because that again decides what kind of a supply chain you are going to have, what is going to be your overall strategy. So once you have this, you are able to know that uh, from a logistics per perspective, what do I need to do? Should I keep so many warehouses? Should I use uh, 22 feeder trucks or should I use smaller trucks? So all this is very strategic and that decision can be taken only when I have those details. You can take long term decisions on sourcing. Uh, example would be should I have my own uh, warehouses or versus I, I should uh, have uh, warehouses from partners. That again goes for insourcing and outsourcing, uh, whether I manufacture it or I get it manufactured from outside. Uh, many times we uh, can use the network that is available with a sister company or many companies uh, go for merger and acquisition, they buy other companies. So in effect, you are not duplicating your supply chain network. So should I uh, use uh, the other network that is available to me in case of a merger and acquisition or should I reduce it or should I just shut, shut it down? So this kind of a continuous analysis helps you do continuous cost reduction across the board in my supply chain. I can reduce my procurement costs, I can reduce my production costs, logistics and distribution cost. And of course, if I know my reverse logistics cost, I know what is my service cost. So see, these are some of the benefits of doing analysis of costs of the product. So now I have some uh, screens to show you to give you a uh, uh, visualization of uh, you know how uh, these products work again. This is not limited to just uh, supply chain tube. Many other products are there, and you'll find similar types of screens. So uh, these products basically uh, mo uh, you, you model your entire supply chain in these products. So you put all your locations. Locations may be manufacturing facilities. They could be uh, distribution centers. They could be customers. So you put all your locations, you put all the costs associated to those locations, you put the capacity of those uh, locations, whether it's manufacturing capacity, whether it's storage capacity, throughput capacity. So we put the entire data of my supply chain into the software. Now that data is uh, my network data. So cost of uh, manufacturing, cost of warehousing, uh, cost of procurement, cost of shipping. So that is one part of the data. And second part is the 
actual transactions that uh, happened. So these are, uh, as you can see now, whether it is the past shipment. So those are the actual transactions that happened. And, and of course, we can also use it for future demand uh, in case I need to find out what is my expected cost. So all the past transactions, meaning whatever shipments I have done over a period of time to a particular customer and what are all the costs associated with it. Uh, all, all my demand, whether it is in the form of sales orders, so these are all the shipments that I would have done in a particular month or a week, uh, and, and uh, I know by which customer. So again, the level of granularity is there that we can find out if the cost of a particular sales order was how much versus another sales order. Uh, we can even go to the level of uh, shipments between warehouses. So if I ship from warehouse A to warehouse B, many times we move material from A to B. So we need to capture all that information also uh, so that that transfer cost is also captured. So these are some of the output screens. So now here you can see that I have information by zone and within the zone I have by different items. So if I ship in each zone, the same item, these are the different heads of cost that uh, the rent that can be attributed to this particular item is so much. And then uh, the salary, that is the direct cost of labor that has gone into uh, this particular product is this much. Uh, and mind you, these are all the outputs. So the system has already calculated and said that in the total cost of a particular period, be it a year or a month, uh, out of that total, so much can be attributed to rent, salary, uh, warehousing cost, production cost, inventory cost, etc., etc., etc. And in the end, I also have that what was my total sales and what was my uh, revenue out of it. So I have the total cost and I have the total revenue. So it gives me an idea of you know how much margin I am making for the same item but in different zones. So you will see that these values are different, and then comes the next step of analyzing that how is it really going to help me. So now that I have all my breakups of a particular item, then I can at least go down to that level. That why why is rent in uh, east zone uh, different from uh, rent in the south zone can i reduce that and this for the same item or can i optimize that so these these uh, decisions are possible this analysis and decision is possible only when you have this kind of a breakup uh, another view uh, so now this is by manufacturing facility so if the same item is being produced in two different manufacturing facilities uh, you will be Surprised to know that uh, the manufacturing cost can be different because uh, one facility can have older uh, machines which is having uh, different efficiency versus another facility which is having newer machines and it has a much higher efficiency. So the costs will obviously be different. So I still need to know what are those different costs. So again, I can take a decision that for a particular customer, I my manufacturing cost is more if I ship from uh, manufacturing facility A, but my uh, transportation cost is less. So I can still average it out if I ship from higher manufacturing cost facility, but a lower uh, transportation cost facility. So all this decision is possible only when I know my item cost elements in the supply chain for each product. Uh, another uh, output where we can have just by an item, what are those different heads of uh, the the uh, cost elements and then what are the unit costs by each of those cost elements. So with this now, uh, what I'll suggest uh, organizations to do is that they should do this kind of analysis on a regular basis. They should look at their ongoing business uh, transactions that are happening, collect all the data, use the of analytical software on a regular basis to find out that which cost element is going beyond a tolerance limit 
and then try to see how it can be optimized or how it can be controlled. Uh, what are the benefits of doing this? I have seen companies getting benefits of up to 35% of reduction in the supply chain cost just because they did not know that what were different cost elements, they did not know where to attack and where to reduce. So up to 35%, of course, that is an extreme case, but in, on an average, I have seen companies get anywhere between 10 to 12% of savings in their supply chain costs. Uh, yes, Priyanka, uh, any? Thank you for your presentation, sir. Uh, I believe audience also want to know that uh, why do we need to know the cost to serve? So, uh, see, there are many reasons why I or an organization needs to know what is the cost to serve. So, first of all, what is the cost to serve? Cost to serve is what is the cost incurred in my supply chain to move the product from my manufacturing facility to the end customer. So that is my supply chain cost to serve. And it's always a significant part of the overall cost of a product. Uh, especially in bulkier products, you know, like cement or something, it is a very significant part. So unless I know what is that cost and it is made up of what elements, how do I know where should I improve my efficiency? So many times uh, you may be just spending a lot of money in stocking a product in a particular location, uh, thinking that you are building safety stock. But actually there is no need for that. So what you are doing in effect, you are blocking some capital in inventory, which is leading to inventory holding costs. So unless I have that information, I will not know that why is my product cost so high or whatever is the product cost, what are the elements that are making it so much. Once I know that, I will know, okay, let me reduce this. If my inventory holding cost is very high, uh, let's say an average should be uh, some 8 to 10 percent, then and it is up to 12 percent then i need to look into it and when can i look into it only when i know that it is so much so that's why it is very important to know what is the cost to serve any questions from the audience hello mr kirit i have a question for you okay yes, then is invisible cost a detriment to revenue cycle management uh, yes it is because uh, again what do we mean by invisible cost? That uh, you know, I, I am thinking my product cost is X, and I uh, think that you know uh, these are the four elements that are going into building that cost to X. But when I do any in-depth analysis, it doesn't add up to that X, and that is possible only when I use uh, you know some kind of analytical software. Then I will know that you know there is some other element which is not visible to me yet and i need to find out what that is so when i find that out only then i can take some action on it so yes invisible uh, cost in any product uh, costing uh, methodology exposes uh, my you know overall margin versus uh, cost uh, calculation so so why is supply chain about much more than merely cost reduction See, supply chain is a very vast uh, uh, area. It's just not movement of uh, product. It is movement of product uh, which achieves SLAs and which does it in a way that it optimizes your overall efficiency, including your cost. So, you know, unless you are achieving all these three elements at the same time, you, are, you cannot say that your supply chain is efficient. Hence, it is very important to know that, uh, you know, what are those different elements and how will I, uh, uh, you know, how will I attack those elements which are actually affecting my cost. So supply chain is certainly much more than just, uh, you know, shipping of goods. Any questions yeah. from the audience? Yeah, please, uh, this question from me, Mr. Kiriti. Uh, sir, I just want to confirm, is sharing really caring when it comes to and addressing costs? Uh, sorry, uh, I think we... I, I repeat my question. Is sharing really caring when it comes to addressing and to and costs? Uh, yes, it is because, see, uh, 
uh, again well of course uh, we think supply chain is one uh, one uh, operation but it is not within that one operation we have so many different uh, organization uh, or or you know functions so we'll have purchasing function we'll have uh, warehousing function we'll have uh, logistics function uh, we'll have manufacturing uh, so you know each each wants to work in their silo nobody wants to share uh, what is their uh, you know what whatever uh, they're cooking within their own silo once that gets exposed they feel insecure and they feel that now you know somebody will come with a uh, with a stick and beat us but we have to move away from that mentality we have to share all the information and only once we share will we become transparent and only then we will know that all these functions put together are contributing to so much of my total product cost so yes sharing certainly is caring when it comes to my organization's costing any other questions from the audience yeah i have a question to mr yes sir uh does that uh, greater transparency spend align to efforts yeah i think uh, this goes back to my previous uh, the previous question that was answered that uh, you know transparency uh, and and it's both uh, you know top down as well as bottom up so bottom up meaning that each of those functions are transparent with their uh, function you know whatever tasks they are doing how much it is costing to do all those tasks so it builds up uh, you know that entire uh, product cost similarly there is a bottom uh, or top down uh, uh, transparency also that once we arrive at this total we should share it with everybody that this is what is your contribution is and this is where we can share so it is not to put down any piece not to put down any function but finding out ways that how can this entire thing can be reduced so it, you know it may be that warehouse cost is high but it is high because uh, the manufacturing uh, facility has not packed it properly or there are better ways to pack it so you know whenever we have this kind of transparency and people work together in the supply chain end to end much better results will come out any other question from the audience oh uh, yes uh hello mr kevit uh, so i have a question like uh, how one can actually work on internal vulnerabilities to lower down the risk factors in supply chain so first of all we need to know what are those risks okay uh, and and again there, there is plethora of risks so i i just talk to risks that are associated to cost or what are those risks that can uh, that can affect your cost so uh, we need to know you know risks related to my supply side supply being uh, an example would be shipment of product so if i know that uh, you know i i have these five transporters that i use but there is a risk in using this particular one meaning i know in the past uh, he has not performed well whenever i need vehicles from him he doesn't give me those uh, number of vehicles then i have to go outside buy uh, vehicles at, at spot rates and it increases my cost so we have to look at each function each operation of the supply chain and list down what are the risks involved in those operations so i just gave you one example other examples could be let's say on the procurement side that i need raw material whereas i have uh, let's say two or three suppliers from whom i procure that raw material i should know that which is my best preferred supplier and which is my least preferred supplier because again in the past i have got uh, quality issues from that supplier if i have quality issues then it not only affects my production it also affects my reverse logistics so the product comes back or it develops some fault so i need to list down those risks and only when i know all those risks and why they are happening then i can reduce the you know overall vulnerability of my product uh, or my supply chain uh, once i know them. So, uh, so where are your 
Uh, see, uh, any cost that is not visible is hidden. That is the simple answer to that. Uh, so the first step, like I mentioned in my presentation, would be to put all my historical data into some kind of analysis, where, which throws up all those hidden costs. So it will look at all your transactions, it will look at all your uh, payables that you have made to different people, and it will match that, you know, 90% of your payables, uh, which you have paid maybe as salary, as rent, or as uh, procurement, or whatever, is matching to what my total costs were. Then you know that this 10% is coming from somewhere else. And that is possible only when you do this analysis, and those are the hidden costs. Once they come out, you try to find out how those hidden costs have come. Any questions from our audience? So before I wrap up, we thank you all for joining us today. We will sending you our recorded webinar to everyone and also we will send you the follow up mails. Do join us in our official LinkedIn page. You can also visit our website www.gazel.in. Our next webinar topic will be how to use supply chain analytics. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.